I had a, someone play this in the MIDI, mm -hmm. like perform it, right? Yeah. And then that goes to this. That's what MIDI spits out. Yeah, those are the MIDI notes. And then what I do is I assign everything and figure out what's gonna play what. Well, now I can have real French horn. Yeah. And I can do other things with French horns besides just having them play regular notes. Like, you know, they could stick their hand in the bell and it sounds very nasally. Same thing with like trombones, you can mute on them. Yeah, so it sounds very raspy. Well, yeah. that's neat. And then they can like take it out. Yeah. You know, and they have that in samples. Mm -hmm. However, you, know, you have to do it all by hand. It was uh, Patrick Doyle mm. said, you know, the, the time and energy it goes into doing the mock-up, I might as well have like a small 30 piece chamber orchestra at my, it just shows up to my house and we'll just mm. hand them the music and I'll conduct it every day. <laughs> <laughs> because it takes two days to make everything so sound so real because not only do you have to perform it, play it, yeah. you have to record it and then mix it in such a way that breathes life into it. This is like the spreadsheet to the full score where all the instruments are all listed out. Everything is nice, nice and le neatly accounted for. See, this all goes meticulously is that is now is that hand it's all handwritten that's all handwritten okay yeah. wow you know, i forgot what kind of mechanical pen i use pencil i use wow so i do this and then i go have it scanned zing mm -hmm. right and i send it off to different parts of the world <laughs> To have it copied. You're outsourced. <laughs> yeah, different parts of the world to have it, uh, this will be notated into an engraved score. Mm. And then the parts will be extracted and someone like a music preparation librarian will like put all the parts together and make a book for just like the violins, a book just for the flutes, a mm. book for the trombones, a book for the trumpets. And so they'll have all their parts there. Why am I doing it by hand, you may ask. Well. For a very simple reason, uh, you know, why is vinyl being produced? So I figured this is my version of vinyl, <laughs> but on manuscript paper. And I, quite frankly, uh, it's, you know, the time involved in it, it, it's it's quite, you know, if you can see, you know, all the little lines have to be hmm. filled out. It's quite labor intensive. So what I want to do is this will probably be among the last times that I do this by hand. Sometimes it's really nice. It's a nice process to do it by this way because you can reconsider some of your compositional choices. Hmm. You know, you could, um, uh, for instance, uh, you know, if you had something that you said uh, low woodwinds. Well, what kind of low woodwinds? You know what? I think it was going to be an English horn. An English, an English horn and just a solo English horn. Or the English horn, which is kind of like a bigger oboe, will mm. be the lead voice because it has a very specific darker reedy sound and then the other woodwinds will be under that. You have your, your sketch here. You can almost sometimes envision, okay, if the orchestra's playing, wait a minute, so-and-so is not doing anything. You know, wait a minute, the, 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 the uh, French horns aren't doing anything. The trumpets aren't doing anything that part. I can put uh, put mutes on them, and they can play with the violas. So this piece of music right here will eventually come out here, and it will look something, you know, something along these lines. You know, this opening is kind of like a James Bond kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the clown hideout. The scene is that there's there's this car driving down. Um, uh, uh, a, a, a road right next to the ocean that's going off to a, um, a, a pier that looks like there's a carnival and at the end we see the spaceship that's like hidden among the carnival. We figure we'll hide here, no one will see us. <laughs> We're amongst our people. So anyways, so our good guys are in this car. So anyways, I, so I got this kind of line that goes and at this bar we have all the strings in high harmonics and this is like harp. So we go It's very mysterious. So and that line continues out. So I know what this is. This is this right here is gonna be like harp, maybe harp and vibraphone. And my thing won't break. Vibraphone. 
when I originally did this, these were all with synthesizers. This is like a harp-like patch on an Oberheim or something like that, or a plucked patch. Well, now I can do it with a real harp, you know, that, and they, and they could pro I'll probably add a little extra filigree in there. And up here will be the, the violins. They'll, they'll be playing in artificial harmonics mm -hmm. where they press down a, a string as they're bowing. And above, they lightly touch just a fourth pitch above. They'll play these um, harmonics above it have this gorgeous glassy sound. And even, even if you have like four violins, they, them playing that together, all of a sudden it's like, wow, this ear, what happened? You know, are there ghosts in the room kind of thing? Especially when they're playing like a little melody. Sound is really, really eerie and beautiful, right? And then uh, later on, they'll just go, this is like my Bernard Herrmann section hmm, okay. with like low brooding chords, right? Some people call it aleatoric music where it's not in any key. You'll, you one chord's in the key of G and the other chord's in the, in the key of E flat minor or something like that, mm. you know. And so what I'll do, when I go between the chords, I have the brass, the, the trombones and the tuba will be in a mute. Uh, in this case, a bucket mute for the trombones and the tuba will have a regular mute. And this is where I was explaining before I would have the, I, all of a sudden I decided out of nowhere, you know what, the French horns are gonna put them up about an octave higher and I'm gonna have them play uh, uh, stopped, you know, with the hand in the bell, and then when they play the different chord on this chord, and when they play the different chord, they'll open it up. So I'll have it like a nasally sound. It's called stopped, you know, a nasally sound, and then they'll release it and they'll open it up. So it has this. It's almost like on a synthesizer where you change the filter. You go mm -hmm. open, right? So it it just lends a little bit more color to those chords. That brings attention to them and then and if you keep doing it over and over it gets pretty boring so you do it like two maybe two or three times and then on the last cadence you leave it open so this is my version of vinyl but for manuscript paper so i got like it's done by hand this will probably be you know one of the last times i do it because what i will usually do is do this mm -hmm. label it give it to someone and I say, take a pass at this with my direct, someone who knows how to orchestrate well. And they can hear the music, they can hear what I've got, and they hear my notes, they see what I, and they'll just go, they'll run with it. And then I'll look at, look at their engraved copy and I'll say, okay, that's good, that's good. You know what, let's take the contrabass out here. Let's not, you know, second thought, let's not do that. And I'll adjust it as it, as it, as it goes. Mm -hmm. And that's much easier than doing this, you know, because the guys that do this work, they have a workflow that works very fast. And um, there will be a day when the tablet technology is, is perfected. Mm -hmm. That's when I'm going to use it because I've seen it. I've seen the tablets where you can basically pull this up and I can sit here and expand this and then write the flute part out really nice and with all the little details with the, with the slur marks and bring things back. But, it, but it's not fully protect. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, um, him worked all the bug bugs. Perfect. Out. Yeah. Okay. Would you guys like coffee now?